Have you heard of Zapier, but you aren't sure what it can do for you in your business? Keep watching to find out. Hey everyone, I'm Janelle Allen, learning and marketing strategist for course creators. If you're new here, welcome. I'm happy to have you go ahead and click that subscribe button if you're not subscribed to the channel and don't forget to click the bell icon next to it so that you get notifications for new videos every week. So let's start by defining what Zapier is. Zapier is a tool that allows you to connect two or more software applications. It allows you to set a trigger and have specific actions take place. So this is a great tool to use if there is not a direct integration between tools that you're using. Now Zapier calls these automations or workflows or whatever you, you want to call them, they call them zaps. So whenever something happens, that trigger and the action, that's called a zap. So if you hear me use that word, that's what I mean. Zapier is starts for free. So it, they have a free account or a free plan. You can definitely get started for free with five zaps. And then from there, as you grow, you can choose one of their pricing plans. And I got to tell you, the free plan is very useful. I think I used it for the first four years of my business before upgrading to a paid plan. So definitely check it out and start for free and upgrade when you're ready. All right, let's talk about how Zapier helps you and what you can do with it. All right, so when you're using a new tool, the question that everyone asks is how does this help me? So let's dig into that. What can you do with Zapier? And there's actually quite a few things you can do. I'd break it down into four different ways Zapier helps you. The first one is it allows you to connect two apps when there is not a direct integration available. So a lot of times, for example, if you are using an email service provider for your newsletter and you have sequences set up, maybe you want to connect that to another tool like a course platform. Well, a lot of times that email service or whatever the software is would have a direct integration with several tools, but it does happen where you stumble upon a tool that you'd like to use and there's not a direct integration with a tool that you already use. And so that's where Zapier comes into play. That's where Zapier allows you to automate a process, even if there's not a direct integration. So that's really where Zapier shines. So that's the first use case. The second way that Zapier helps you is it allows you to create and automation with more than two apps. So previously we talked about connecting two applications, but the great thing about Zapier is you can connect multiple applications. So two, three, four, five, and on. I haven't pushed it to its limits, but I've definitely connected three or four apps in one Zap. So that's super powerful and it goes beyond what you can do with a an direct integration. Thirdly, Zapier allows you to create a multi-step automation. So what do I mean by that? A multi-step automation is an automation that has a single trigger and multiple actions. So one event that triggers everything to happen, but you have multiple things happening or multiple actions. And then the last thing that Zapier helps you to do is to create an automation with filters or paths. So as you start doing more and more automations, you're gonna run into instances where you have conditions, where you only want this action to run if this condition is met. And to do that, you're gonna need filters. Or you might have an if-then path. If this happens, then I want this action to happen. But if this other thing happens, I want this other action to happen. And you can do all of that with Zapier. So it's a great tool that allows you to start simply and then increase in complexity using filters and paths. So those are the four things that Zapier allows you to do to help you automate your business. Okay. So let's take a look at some examples. I am logged into my Zapier account and you can see just when you log in, if you haven't used Zapier before, you're going to have um, this menu on the, on the left-hand side. I'm in the Zap section. So I already have Zap set up and I use folders to keep everything organized. So let's navigate to um, 
Well, actually, let me, let's set up one from scratch. So as a course creator, the probably one of the zaps that you're going to use most often is going to be after someone buys your course, you want something to happen. So the trigger is someone buying your course. So we're going to click this button, make a new zap. And then you search for whatever application you're using, right? So you could teachable has an integration with Zapier, um, but I'm going to use Podia because that's what I'm currently using for my course. So you can see trigger event, right? So we're looking for a new sale in this case, but if you were doing something for a membership, you could see that these are the triggers available. Now, every application has its own triggers, right? It's up to that software application to create the triggers um, that you see in Zapier. So Podia has made these four triggers available. So we're going to click new sale and then it's going to ask you to click continue. It's going to verify or choose your account. So you can see I'm already connected here. If you weren't connected, you would just need to add your credentials. But since I am, we'll just hit continue and then we can hit test trigger. So then it's going to look for a sale, right? It's going to look for a recent sale. Now, sometimes I find that it pulls in really old data. And so you might have to, um, if you click on this button here, you might have to tell it to load more. So we can just, you know, take a look and, and choose one. Um, I'm gonna look for one that's actually a course. Or this is this is fine. This is a uh, an ebook. So let's just pretend that that's a course sale instead of an ebook. And then the next thing, I wanna connect this to my email service provider. Now it's going to remember the apps that I use most often. So you can see, I can just pick from ConvertKit right here. Um, before using ConvertKit, I was using Drip, so it still remembers that. Um, but maybe you're using ActiveCampaign. Let's see if there's, yep, ActiveCampaign is here. So MailChimp, yep, MailChimp is here. So you can just search for whatever app you wanna to connect to. So I'm using ConvertKit, so I'm gonna choose that. And then I need to choose the action. Now, just like with the trigger, um, ConvertKit is responsible for setting the available actions. So I'm looking at the, this list to see what ConvertKit has made possible via Zapier. All right, so it looks like I can add to a form, add a tag, add the subscriber to a sequence, create or update a purchase, or remove a tag. So what I want to do is to add them to a sequence. So let's say the use case is they've bought the course and now I wanna enroll them into an onboarding sequence. So I'm gonna choose that and hit continue. And then same deal, right? It's gonna ask me to select the ConvertKit account that I wanna to link to and hit continue. And then there's a bunch of information that you will choose. So I'm going to put onboarding, right? So we'll just pick one. I have a few onboarding automations. And then I have the option of going through and adding additional data. Now you definitely want to select the email address um, and you're gonna choose the email address that they used in the trigger app, right? So in this case, Podia. So I'm gonna choose, pull the customer data. Zapier will automatically pull it and you just choose which one you want to use. If you want the, the name, I can add that from Podia as well. And everything else is optional, right? So all of this stuff is optional if you've already collected that data. And then I have a lot of custom fields in ConvertKit. So what you see here, these are custom fields that I have set up in ConvertKit. So if I want to update a custom field, remember this Zap is adding a subscriber to a sequence, but the way that ConvertKit has their integration with Zapier set up, I can also update a custom field here. We're not gonna do that right now. All right, so all I wanna do is add them to the sequence. So all I need is the email address and the first name and the sequence that I want them to be added to, and I already have that. So I'm gonna hit continue. And then you can run a test. I'm not going to do that because this is actually a, um, a real person on my email list. So you can click skip test, which is what I'm gonna do. And then it 
closes. Now, the nice thing about Zapier is if there were any errors, it would tell me, you know, a little error log would pop up and, and be highlighted here. So I would know. And then once that is good to go, then all I need to do is to come down here and turn the Zap on. And then it lets you know your Zap is on and you are good to go. So that is, oh, and don't forget to name, name your Zap, right? I'm just gonna put example. So that is one zap that would be super helpful for course creators. So let's add on to that, right? So remember how we talked about um, the main use case is someone buys your course, you add them to a sequence. But there was also the option to update additional data. So let's say after you add them to the sequence, you also want to maybe update a custom field or add a tag. Well, you can do that as well. So with ConvertKit, you can do it a couple of ways. If I wanted to update a custom field, remember you could see that option. So we'll go back into setup action and you could see all of the data that's connected to subscribers in my ConvertKit account. So maybe I want to um, put, I'm looking for a specific one customer, right? So maybe I want to put purchased here, right? Maybe that's one of my, my field possibilities. And I want to do that. So then after I set that up, I would just hit, if I want to test it, I could do that. But again, I'm skipping this because this is a real person. And then I would hit close. But there's also another way to do multiple actions. So we're gonna go back to setup and you can add another action. So you see this plus sign here. So I could go and add something to happen uh, before or after. I'm gonna do after. So we've got the sale, we've added them to the sequence in ConvertKit and then I'm gonna hit plus here and I'm choosing ConvertKit again because I still want something to happen. And this time I'm choosing a different action. So this is a multi-action zap. So this time, let's say I want to, let's say I want to create a purchase. So I want to have a record in ConvertKit that this person purchased the course. So I'm going to click create or update purchase. You could also update it, add a tag, whatever you wanted to do, add them to a form, but I'm going to hit create or update purpose just as an example. And then you're gonna run through the same process, right? So you're gonna choose your account and then this is gonna pull in data from Podia. It's looking for a transaction ID. Um, let's just pull one sale ID right here. Email, we're gonna pull this. And then it wants data for the purchase. So we're gonna look for that information in Podia. It's gonna all of that information is coming through from Podia. So we're going to just search the price. Here we go, we've got that. And then we're not doing tax right now. And then we want the total, which I'm gonna do price for both of these. And then if you wanna enter the transaction time and all of that good stuff, you can. And the only other thing I care about, which is actually required, is the, the, the name of the product, right? So. You have the description. Again, all of this is in Podia. And then it wants the product ID. So you can pull that from Podia too. And then you just hit continue. We're gonna skip the test again. And then now we have set up a multi-action zap. So again, the trigger was someone purchased a product. Now I'm looking for the sale in Podia as that trigger. The first action was to add them to a sequence in ConvertKit, the onboarding sequence for the product. And then the second action was to create a purchase in ConvertKit. So we've got a multi-action zap. Okay, so let's look at one more zap example. Now this is for a workshop. So let's say that you're running a workshop, maybe you're doing a joint workshop and you've put together a great landing page to get signups. So people are gonna to go to your landing page, they're gonna opt in, enter their name and their email address to register. You also have the platform where you're running the workshop. So whether you're using Zoom 
or you're using Crowdcast or Demio, you need a way for their signup information to make it into the platform. Sometimes these platforms have direct integrations. Sometimes they have their own landing pages. However, I found that the landing pages that come with these workshop platforms are not optimized for conversion. So I tend to enjoy using uh, lead pages. Uh, you could also use ClickFunnels to create my landing page. So let's figure out, we're, you know, we're going to need a zap to make the two talk to each other. So I would come in here and we'll just hit create zap. And we're going to look for, um, I'm going to look for lead pages. So we've got lead pages here and we're, we're going to select a trigger event. In this case, there's only one new form submission, right? There's really, you know, that's the, the main thing that's happening on this landing page where people are submitting a form. So we're going to select that and hit continue. And then it's asking me to choose my account hit continue. All right. And now I have to select which form I want. So I'm just going to pick one randomly and hit continue. So once that is done, I'm not going to test it. Um, then let's say you want to register them into your platform, right? So that when they show up to your event, they don't have to log in and register on the platform when they already registered on the landing page. All right. So register participant. That is what I want to do. Crowdcast. Okay. So that's the action and we'll hit continue. Again, you're going to select your account and hit continue. And then it's just going to ask you the data. So, right. You can lead pages actually has some sample data. So we'll just use that sample data. The email address is the most important one. And then it looks like there is a code. Let's see, event code, I think. I don't know what that would, I know convert or Crowdcast uses event codes. So we'll just say that this is the event code. It actually explains this is a unique event code for the event. Oh, okay. So this is actually going to be a, it's going to be a string of text. So we'll just say example. And then if you want, if you've collected the first name, you can put that there, but that's optional. And then you hit continue. And this is really useful because it tells you, all right, there's an error here. If you remember previously, I said Zapier is going to let you know if there's any issues. So it says, Hey, step one needs your attention. Uh, there's no event code, so you need to fix that. So we're going to go back. Um, we're going to test. And basically the issue is that I did not test anything. I, I think that's the issue. So we're going to test and see if that fixes everything. And then we'll just, we'll just select the ID. I think that's what it wants. So that's what it wants. It wanted the ID. So we'll just hit skip test in this case. And that is another zap that you can use if you are running a workshop and you want to make sure, and you want to use a landing page from lead pages or click funnels. And you want to make sure that people who register uh, or people who opt in on the landing page are registered inside of the workshop platform. All right. So in today's video, you learned what Zapier is. You learned that Zaps are what Zapier calls automations. You learned how Zapier helps you and you saw some examples of Zaps in my account. All right. Give me some love down in the comments and let me know if you have any questions or comments. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace.